Hi, this is John O'Hanion from Avid LLC, here to present the case for ducted fan VTOL, which stands for Vertical Takeoff and Landing. This presentation was given at AUVSI's Unmanned Systems North America 2011. First, we'd like to give an overview of what a ducted fan vehicle might look like. Here in the center, we have a generic design with a duct around the edge. In the center, you'll find a fan. You might also have a fuselage along the center line of the vehicle. Some designs incorporate a stator for straightening the flow, and there will be control surfaces in the high-speed exit flow to produce forces and moments to steer the vehicle. We've also included some uh, existing vehicle designs. One of the first was the Sandia A-Rod, also the Honeywell T-Hawk, which has been deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan, the Allied 29i, the Aurora GoldenEye series of vehicles, and the Mass Heli Spy. These are all vehicles that have successfully flown. There are many others, but these are just some of the more prominent designs. To give a little bit more background behind the T-Hawk system, it was developed by Honeywell, and Avid was a team member in charge of the conceptual design, the vehicle sizing and layout, and the aerodynamic design of the duct, fan, stators, and control surfaces. The basic T-Hawk system fits in two backpacks shown on the left, including all the command and control hardware. It carries a two-pound payload, which is an EOIR camera that's gimbaled to look in any direction, and the vehicle can fly for roughly 50 minutes of endurance. On the right, we show the Increment 2 vehicle, which is roughly 60 pounds but still backpackable. It carries an 8-pound payload, which in the current configuration is a laser designator, but it could carry any payload up to 8 pounds for 60 minutes of endurance and up to altitudes of 11,000 feet above sea level for operation in mountainous environments. The propulsion system is a Cubano rotary engine that runs on heavy fuel, either JP-8 or diesel. And in the lower right, we have pictured the fan for the vehicle that was designed by Avid and fabricated by Swift Engineering. It's a monolithic carbon composite fan that is all one piece. The main idea behind our presentation is that ducted fan vehicles are superior in their payload capacity and small form factor. For a given disk area, the ducted fan can carry more payload than any other configuration. And if you think about it the other way, for the same amount of payload, a ducted fan UAV will be smaller than any other configuration. Shown below are some equations describing the relationship between the power required and the hover thrust. On the left, we have an equation for an open propeller uh, with uh, the thrust in the numerator and rho being air density and A being the disk area and the denominator. On the right you'll see the equation for the ducted fan with a slight change in the denominator with a 4 instead of a 2. Looking at the ratio of the power required for an open propeller versus a ducted propeller you'll see a factor of a square root of 2. What this means is that a duct of the same disk area will provide 26% more thrust for the same fixed power as an open propeller, or th will require 30% less power for the lifting the same amount of weight. Next, we'd like to explain some of the rationale for our thinking behind this. We did a study a while back uh, comparing uh, a hovering ducted fan with a fixed wing. In this study, we compared conceptual vehicle designs of a fixed wing MAV and a ducted fan MAV. They were both sized to perform a one hour mission at altitudes up to 10,000 feet above sea level. We used our multidisciplinary design tool, Avid OAV, to design the ducted fan MAV, and Avid Wrapped, or Rapid Error Prediction Tool, to design the fixed wing MAV based on a Black Widow example. It was also desired that each MAV carry as much payload and electronics as possible with the uh, maximum dimension of 8 inches. The resulting designs are shown on the right with the ducted fan uh, with the outside diameter of 8 inches and a height of 9 inches and the fixed wing uh, 3 inches tall but 10 inches in span and 12 inches in cord 
and those were over the, the goal of 8 inches um, in order to increase the, the payload capacity. Taking a look at the weight breakdown for these two vehicles shows you some drastic differences. The ducted fan was much heavier at 5.5 pounds, but could carry more payload, over a pound. And looking at the, um, the structure weight, our initial estimates on that were conservative. We feel that that could be optimized and further uh, increases could be added to the payload capacity. The fixed wing MAV, on the other hand, came in at roughly half a pound gross weight and the maximum payload capacity of about 0.16 pounds. So from this study, it was evident that a ducted fan MAV with the same maximum dimension would be able to carry much more payload than a fixed wing. And in this particular case, it was seven times more payload. Another advantage a ducted fan has over a fixed wing UAV is its small logistical footprint. Many fixed wing UAVs require a cleared area, a runway, or a catapult, uh, specialized equipment for recovery. Whereas a ducted fan, you would place it on the ground, it takes off vertically, flies its mission, and can return to the same location without any improvements to the area. Additional advantages that a ducted fan has over a fixed wing UAV include the ability to keep your eyes on target longer. With a hovering vehicle, you can stare directly at your target for as long as you have fuel or batteries, whereas with a fixed wing UAV, you need to circle around your target, fly by, try to get the right angle, uh, whereas with a, a ducted fan, you could come in from any direction, pan, tilt, move the vehicle to different areas to investigate. Also, a ducted fan has a large range of speeds, all the way from hover up to 50, 60, or even 70 knots. This gives you the ability to track uh, targets of variable speed uh, continuously. So, for example, if a, a person were walking, then running, gets in a vehicle and drives away, all of those cases could be uh, addressed with this one single vehicle. The ducted fan's higher payload to vehicle volume ratio means that it's easily backpackable, even tube deployable, and the logistics footprint is much smaller, so it's easier to transport, easier to deploy. Safety can be an issue for some of the open tip propellers on hand tossed aircraft or even catapult launched aircraft. With the ducted fan, the enclosed rotor is inherently safer. Finally, if there is an engine failure, a fixed wing vehicle has a much larger, larger radius of area where it might land. A ducted fan would be easier to uh, predict what would happen with an engine failure. Next, we'd like to compare the ducted fan to other hovering vehicles, first looking at the helicopter. The ducted fan has lower hover power required for a fixed disk area and gross weight, so the vehicle can have a smaller engine, or the dimensions of the vehicle could be smaller to carry the same payload. Also, the ducted fan's enclosed rotor is a safety improvement over a helicopter. Also, the, the enclosed rotor means that operation close to fixed objects, going through doors, bumping into walls, is not catastrophic, like it could be with a helicopter. For an equivalently sized vehicle, a ducted fan will be able to fly faster than a helicopter, and this is because there's no retreating blade limitation as seen in helicopter aerodynamics. And this is because a ducted fan will tilt into the wind for high-speed flight, operating more like a propeller rather than a helicopter rotor. In that configuration, the duct uh, is adding lift to the thrust of the fan, thereby further augmenting the performance of the vehicle. Finally, the ducted fan's control actuation is simpler than a helicopter. There's no need for a swash plate or cyclic control, but simple RPM control of the fixed pitch fan and the control surfaces driven through linkages and servos are sufficient for flight control. Quad rotors are a subclass of helicopters that are becoming increasingly popular in the UAV community, but if they don't include the duct effect, they share the same disadvantages as helicopters in that they require more power for the same amount of thrust as a ducted fan or they're going to be larger. 
Now you can shroud the propellers in a quad rotor and you can recover some of those efficiency benefits of the duct. However, for that same quad rotor, it will be typically 30% larger in plane than a ducted fan vehicle with equivalent disc area. That means that you'll have less clearance for passing through doorways, windows, or avoiding obstacles. The ducted fan also will have larger yaw authority using the control vanes rather than the differential RPM control that a quad rotor uses. It's easy to attain over 200 degrees per second squared angular acceleration uh, using uh, the control surface design in, in ducted fans. And finally, a ducted fan will have a smaller landing footprint for an equivalent weight and disc area. Another advantage that ducted fans have over quad rotors is their scalability. A ducted fan can be designed for a large range of payloads and endurance values, and examples range from a few ounces of payload and hovering for 10 minutes all the way up to 23 pounds of payload and hovering for two hours. And this is partly due to the fact that ducted fans can incorporate any kind of propulsion system, including electric, piston, rotary, and turbine engines. Versions of each of these exist in ducted fan designs. Quad rotors, on the other hand, typically employ electric motors and batteries, and that is because of their control actuation scheme using differential thrust. The battery technology is what limits the ultimate endurance and payload potential of the quad rotor. Finally, ducted fans will be more aerodynamically efficient for an equivalent fan solidity and equivalent tip speed when compared to a quad rotor. And a single ducted fan will have a larger Reynolds number and lower drag. And that's the, the main reason for the increase in aerodynamic efficiency. Also, fewer blades are generally more efficient. Ducted fans do have several challenges, and the foremost of which is the control system is usually more complex than quad rotors, fixed wings, and helicopters. This is due to the nonlinear aerodynamics added by the duct, the same component that's giving more efficiency and lifting capacity. One of the best features of a quad rotor is its ability to hover and maneuver with a simple PID RPM control. For a ducted fan, it usually requires a, a nonlinear control system for ro robust operation. Ducted fan vehicles can be very robust in wind, and typically high disc loading is good for gu gust rejection, but flying in very high winds can be challenging as with any other MAV. A soft landing system for engine failure is another challenge. Endurance, a hovering ducted fan will never equal the endurance of an equivalent fixed wing of the same uh, weight or size. And a user must be willing to pay some endurance penalty for the added capability for the hover and stare, which increases the, the surveillance value of the vehicle, the VTOL capability, which reduces the logistics footprint, and also the small form factor. Finally, noise can be a challenge. While T-Hawk's design didn't prioritize acoustics, any powered lift vehicle will always be louder than a wingborne counterpart. And this is mainly due to the fact that more thrust and power is being expended to fly the vehicle. Subsequent ducted fan vehicles have been designed since T-Hawk that are significantly quieter. So a quiet ducted fan is feasible. So finally, who would benefit from a ducted fan vehicle design? A customer would likely be willing to sacrifice some mission endurance to have higher quality surveillance through the ability to hover and stare or perch and stare at a target. If getting up close to a target is important, a ducted fan will do a much better job than a fixed wing that needs to circle around a target. If your system needs to be portable with little or no logistical support, a ducted fan fits that requirement very well. It can be backpackable, uh, small, and carry a heavy payload. If safety is important, the enclosed rotor of a ducted fan is superior to the open rotor seen in helicopters, quad rotors, and fixed wing vehicles. Finally, if your vehicle needs to operate in tight spaces, a ducted fan will give you the ability to carry your payload in the smallest form factor possible. In summary, if you want to carry a heavy payload, carry it in the smallest volume possible, and stare unblinking at a target, a ducted fan vehicle is your best option. 
Thank you for listening to our presentation today. If you'd like more information about AVID's capabilities or ducted fan technology, please visit our website at avidaerospace.com. Thank you.